This is a much nicer place. I like it more. Seems better lit. <laughs> it's a nice building. There are people that are like hanging from the ceilings. There are people standing around the chamber, all with vines sort of entrapping them. Uh, these people, they seem to be alive, but in some kind of a daze. I think we have some pruning to do. Yeah, sounds good. As you take out the knife to stab him, he just grabs your hand. Well, well I'm, I'm sorry, sorry to, to tell, tell you this, this, but the, the day, day is, is already, already lost, lost, and I have already won. won. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the den, den of, of the, the mind flare. flare. <laughs> Start to descend upon you. Hey, now they seem hostile. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Prepare to Dice, an animated Dungeons and Dragons actual play series. My name is Raghav and I'll be running this game session. So please join me in welcoming the real stars of the game, our gargantuan gamers. <laughs> hey, I'm Andrew Sibner. My character is Timbo Wayne's son, son of Wayne. He's a rock gnome artificer. Hey, I'm Christine. I'm playing Rocco, a Air Genasi bard. My name's Renee. I play Bjorn. She's a half-elf level four, and she will be a warlock soon, but not yet. All right, if we're ready, let's prepare the dice. Uh, Bjorn, Sally, is sort of like clutching your, uh, your arm. She's like, what's going on? And I act all heroic and I say, don't worry, stay behind me. I'll fix this. First of all, I do not know what you are talking about. <laughs> you are oh mumbling randomness and I just don't personally care and I do not have the time to listen or understand. And I am currently busy with our own tasks. <laughs> Would you say that tentacles are essentially one being? Uh, it would seem so. All right, well, I'm going to try to do hold person then on it. So you're going to have to make a wisdom saving throw. All right. Uh, four. Oh. Yeah, you just like release this wave of air that pushes all of the people that are on the vines to the edges of the walls and they're just sort of stuck there prone onto the walls. I want to do a bonus action with my dagger and I want to try to cut that guy free again. So make a dexterity check with advantage. 18, baby. Nice. He rolled a 17, so you just beat him. And I go, no touchy. Ah, ah, ah. He just sort of sliced the back of the vine in his neck and he starts to fall. He'll be fine. It's rain and men. <laughs> <laughs> I see the body starting to fall and figure that, you know, I, I bet I can make it. So I'm going to run to catch it. Awesome. Make an acrobatics check for me. 15. Nice, yeah. So you jump over and you just easily catch that person in your hands and you lay them down gently. I'm gonna go over to this guy. So you, as you run up to them, they see you and when he looks at you, he just sort of like mimes pulling out a bow and arrow and he like aims it at you and, he, uh, and then you suddenly, you feel like an arrow hitting you in the, in the shoulder plate and you take a uh, six damage. It's a mean wizard. I, I have a brain. Sometimes <laughs> when I drink a cold drink, I get a brain freeze. Okay. <laughs> so I want to try a brain freeze. So I shoot a ray of frost straight up. I love it. Ah, oh, I got a one. You like shoot your ray of frost up into the air and it does hit a few of the vines, uh, but you feel them just like sort of crack and break and you can hear like laughter in the room. Just like, <laughs> you, you think, think your puny cantrips can, can get me. Think again. So would you say all the vines are coming from the ceiling area? Mm -hmm. So since I can levitate, how much vertical space would you say I would need to do to hit them and avoid my team members? Yeah, yeah you can go there and then you can go up 15 feet if you want to. Yeah, I'm gonna go up 15 feet and do thunder wave. And yeah, your movement is 30 feet, so you can totally do it. And I'm gonna roll my, it's not great, but 3d8, 12. All right, so these guys over here, they all get pushed back. See like some of the vines are like burning off. These two, the, the wizard one and the other one, the one that was on the ground, he, they just get pushed back and they take that 12 damage. Uh, but the one that's like right in front of you directly looking at you, and he just like slips under your hands and hits the ground. Sweet! I sing the same It's Raining Men song, but this time kind of fast and nervously. <laughs> it's raining men, hallelujah, hallelujah, it's raining men. <laughs> <laughs> I'll shoot an arrow at the vine controlling the guy. Okay. 
10 will not hit. Wow. You release an arrow at him and you can see just like, he's like waves his hand and a magical shield gets formed and it shatters. You are still, still new to this. this. I've had years, years nay, decades, decades of practice. practice. That I am intimidated. <laughs> uh, the wizard uh, looks at Bjorn and he releases another arrow. Now that you've gotten used to, you understand what's happening, you, you sort of just like parkour jump out of the way. A part of the ground next to you just like, like <laughs> splashed and breaks and cracks and you can see like acid spreading out of it. Maybe since this is like a, a challenging encounter, I'll bless my buddies. Uh, I'll say hashtag bless this mess. I've been watching The Circle a lot lately. They talk in hashtags, it's really fun. <laughs> So for the two of you, uh, now for the next minute, which is for the next uh, 10 rounds, you guys have an extra D4 that you can roll when you make an attack or a saving throw. Thank you so much for that, Timbo. You're, wa you're welcome, my pleasure. I'm wondering too if I could use a Hector bonus action thing. Yeah, sure. So maybe I, I have Hector try to run up one of those vines and try to bite the brain if there's a brain up there. Totally, yeah. Hector can easily, he just like goes up. Why don't you make a perception check for me? The 11. 11, yeah. Because of your connection with the god of small things, you know what Hector is feeling at the very least. And you can feel like terrifying fear. And then you get like these images that are flashing through your brain and uh, you get the image of Frederick. He's the guy who cursed you. Oh, that's, oh, that guy. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, bastard. All right, they've finally made their wisdom safe. So you will suddenly see like all of these vines are now coming towards each of you. So I want each of you to make, uh, make a dexterity check for me. Great, all of you have rolled really well. So the vines just start coming for you and each of you just dodges out of the way really deftly. And then you take your dagger and you just like, like slice through each of those vines. Beard, uh, you sort of like jump and as you're jumping, you release an arrow and it goes through the vine. Timber, you see one of the vines, they come for you. As it like hits the ground right next to you, you pick up your mace and you crush it. <laughs> Destroy. And then you see this old man with like a long beard and then he looks at you very angrily. You start seeing like more vines come and like <laughs> start like attaching to this one person. And you see their eyes start to glow and they're like, You, you are, are not worthy. worthy. And I yell at the vines, bitch, I said. <laughs> you suddenly see like all of these vines that are free are now coming towards each of you. So I want each of you to make a dexterity saving throw. Ooh, 12. Got a 14. Well, uh, oh, 20. Ooh, good job. <laughs> nice. All right, so you see as the darkness sort of comes over, uh, it engulfs Rocco, it engulfs Bjorn, and it starts to like take them in. Oh no. And as it's coming towards you, you once again hear Radatoskar's voice and he's like, uh, Hold on for a minute, Timo. And then he, you feel this like fur wrap around you and you suddenly get sucked out of that place. Oh. A few minutes pass in the darkness and uh, as you like open your eyes, uh, Bjorn, you, uh, you find yourself back home. You're in your bed back in your cottage and uh, you blink your eyes and you sit up and you can, you know, like you can hear uh, the trees rustling outside and it's like very familiar. It's exactly your home. You look outside your window and your dad's there. He's chopping wood and it feels like this whole thing has just been a big bad dream. <sighs> so emotional. I know. <laughs> <laughs>